Now we are going to continue with the development of our notebook with the nearest neighbor code. In this case, we are going to implement the algorithm that builds a KD tree from a training data. So we are going to use a library from Python to handle the binary tree because it's not the core of, of this uh, topic, right? Now we are we are going to implement the KD tree algorithm, but not necessarily we want to spend time in implementing a basic binary tree, right? So let's use a library called binary tree. And uh, okay, so we're going to cre create our own class. Let's call it KD tree. It's going to receive the training data. Let's initialize the tree known and uh, okay, and this is the, the build function which is a kind of like what we saw in the slides with the pseudo code. So it's going to receive the, the list of data points and the depth, right? So recall that the first thing is to estimate K, which is the dimensions. Again, we are assuming that our data points come in a pandas data frame. Okay, now the axis is going to be the depth module K, right? Exactly as we saw in the slides. So then the current column, which is going to be the column to make the extraction of the data from the data frame, is going to be In this variable, we are just basically saving the name of the variable associated with the access number. So now we are just checking that if we don't have any more points, like the one of the terminating condition, right? No more points, return known. This is to stop the construction. Now comes the part where we just sort our set of data points. As you can see, we're just using one the pandas function sort values just to sort our uh, objects list. Now we must calculate the median and recall that we have two alternatives for that. First, when we have a pair number of points, here we're getting the index of the median in particular, right? For example, if we have an object list of size 8, then we have an even number of data points. If we divide 8 by 2, we're going to get 4. And this is exactly the index of the median, right? Because if it's 4, considering that in Python, the first index is 0, we are choosing the right object, as we saw in the slides. Now, for cases when we have an odd number of data points, the median is going to be like this. Now we are covering the other case. Imagine we have uh, an odd number of data points, let's say seven. If we divide by two, we're gonna get 3.5. And given that is floor, we are getting three, which is, which is actually exactly the median, right? Because if we, if we have seven data points, our index is going from zero to six. And in position three, we have exactly the correct median. Now we just need to create a node and call recursively the same function. So 
So here, basically, we are calling the node with the name of the data point. So this is why we are indexing in the median index to identify each node. So now, exactly as in the slides, we need to pass all the left data points, which goes from zero to median, and the depth plus one. Recall that we need to pass all the columns, right? Because in the next iteration, it's going to use another axis. Here, we, we must pass all the right data points. So from median plus one till to the end, all the way to the last element. And this is right. So after that, we just return node. OK, this is the recursive function that creates the tree. But now we need another function that actually sets the tree for a class, like here, right? with this tree in order to, to make easier the call of the tree construction after we create an instance of the class. OK, so let's use this notation uh, here. It's going to be like an internal function. So let's try our tree. We can actually use the same data set, the toy data that we saw in the example of the slice. columns X and Y. And then let's call our class with the data. And now let's call the build function. Yeah, here is wrong. I was wrong because it is uh, three is a is a parameter for the round function. It tells the number of decimals we want to keep after doing the round. We have some self. Sorry. To run this again. Here we go. Seems that it's kind of working. Let's print the tree. And here we go. As you can see, this is the same tree we saw in the previous uh, example. So, well, if you want to use this, uh, or if you want to print a bigger tree, actually a huge tree, uh, this library may not be suitable. And you will have to resort to some library that has better printing uh, capabilities. Because as soon as you start building a bigger tree, this uh, representation gets a bit messy. OK, so now in the next video, we are going to see how to actually use this tree for the nearest neighbor search. And we are going to implement the code that allows for the fast search of neighbors that uses this tree.